This is the Insta360 RS1 Twin Edition, and normally I can have a tech review done in less than a week. This one, however, took me a while because I've just been having so much fun learning to use the camera, and it's just been hard to sit down and do the work involved with doing the review portion of the video. Please keep in mind that this will be my initial review as a new user of the Insta360 RS1 Twin Edition, and I plan on doing a more in-depth follow-up review in a few months as a more experienced user at that time. But as it stands now, this is the camera that I never knew I wanted until I got my hands on it. I've seen 360 video before and always thought it was cool, but I never really thought about how I could apply it to so much of what I do. I've also wondered how difficult it would be to edit 360 video, and as it turns out, it's really not difficult at all. Not to say there isn't a very minuscule learning curve, but if you already edit video and understand keyframing, you'll grasp the editing process in no time. If you don't already understand how to edit video, don't worry about it too much because the Insta360 app makes things fairly easy, and along with ShotLab and the included tutorials and step-by-step -step guidance, you'll be making some pretty sweet 360 videos in no time. And while we are discussing the learning curve when you first get this camera, you should shoot a lot of 360 video just so you can get an idea of how to point and shoot with it for various shots and know how the stitch line is going to run through your shot. It's really helpful to have an idea of how to frame your shot to go around your stitch line. Here are some sample clips of 360 video that I shot over the past couple of weeks while being a complete newbie to 360 video shooting and editing. One thing that you should keep in mind is that depending on how your video is framed, the actual image resolution will vary. The 360 module records at 5.7K, but that video is being stretched across the inside of a sphere and then reframing and cropping out and flattening specific sections of the image. So you're likely not going to see all 5.7K of the resolution at any one time. The images that you will export will almost always be some sort of cropped version of the recorded video. Switching gears, if you are new to 360 video like I am, 
the Insta360 RS1 Twin Edition may be the perfect camera for you because due to its modular design, it also includes a 4K lens with wicked smooth stabilization, making it also a top contender for video quality in the world of action cameras. There are a couple of different ways you can shoot video in 4K. One is to do your stabilization while recording. The other is to record a giant video and apply Insta360's flow state stabilization in post-production. As you can see here, when you record with stabilization off, the camera creates a video named with the Pro prefix, and it's actually 4,000 by 3,000 pixels. Okay, so I've switched over to the 4K module now, and I'm out here recording some video at the lake. It's a overcast, cloudy day. Um, we got a little bit of a breeze, but it's not really what I would consider windy. So you can consider all of these tests that I'm recording in 4K mode now. Uh, also, microphone tests for the built-in mic of the Insta360 RS1. Um, I'm recording this in 4K 30 frames per second. I'm walking at a normal pace now and I've got stabilization turned on high. So I'm going to do a run test now and we're going to see how stable the video is as I do that. And the wind did just pick up a little bit so that should give a little bit better indication of what things are going to sound like through the built-in mic in some higher winds. So now I've switched over to turning flow state stabilization off, and I'm going to see how that corrects in post. I'm recording this at 4K, 30 frames per second, and I'm still in log mode. So again, this is what it looks like with the flow state stabilization turned off. Now I'm going to run. Back to walking and back to running. Here's a post stabilization test while walking with the camera facing forward. And here's a post stabilization test with the camera facing forward while running. So if you want to quick and easy with your video settings, you can just record in HDR mode, which I'm recording in now. There are some limitations with recording in HDR mode. Um, you can see that the colors are more vibrant, and this is the default color vibrance. I haven't color graded this. Uh, like I said, if you want it quick and easy, this is the mode that you use. But um, there are some limitations. For one, I'm limited to recording in 4K, 30 frames per second and I can't turn stabilization on or off with this mode. I'm going to walk into a shadowed area now and then back out, and we're going to see what the video looks like as I do that. Again, this is HDR mode. I'm going to come out here into the light and turn around. And we're going to go back into the shadows, see how things look. And that was a test of HDR mode. And here are some sample clips of 4K video that I recorded with the Insta360 RS1's 4K module. Battery life seems to be pretty good overall, especially considering in 360 mode, you're basically recording with two cameras simultaneously. I've taken it out on a few shoots and was able to record plenty of video each time. Just keep in mind that if you want to do some all day shooting, you should buy some extra batteries or an external power supply. It should also be noted that you can use this camera as a USB webcam, and the video quality for a webcam looks absolutely amazing. So overall, I really love this camera. It's small, fun, and mostly convenient. 
I say mostly because there are two things that buyers should be aware of if they're considering purchasing this camera. The first is that you need to activate the camera with the Insta360 app before you can even use the camera at all. And activation may not actually be as straightforward as you might think. The list of phones that can install the Insta360 app is limited. And unfortunately, my phone was not on the list. My phone is a Galaxy A13, not a flagship phone by any stretch of the imagination, but it was released this year, and it can be pretty disappointing to open up a brand new action camera and not be able to use it right away. I had a friend activate my Insta360 ONE RS with his iPhone, and that solved the initial problem of not being able to use the camera. However, I was still without the use of Insta360's app and all of the extra things that you can do with this app. So I shelled out the money for a second hand, but at least compatible phone. For me, it wouldn't be a deal breaker to do all of my editing on a PC and just do without the phone app entirely. I actually prefer working on the PC instead of the phone, but I think that this is definitely a fact that prospective buyers should be aware of. And I will leave a link to the list of compatible phones on Insta360's website in the description as well as in a pinned comment. The second major thing that people should be aware of is the workflow. This camera relies very heavily on post-production. You can plan on using Insta360 software, either the phone app or Insta360 studio software for PCs. But for the best video quality, Insta360 recommends that you export all videos at 4K with the ProRes codec. Now I want to talk about accessories for this camera, mainly the invisible selfie stick which, just like the Invisible Boy from Mystery Men, it's invisible as long as you can't see it. It's actually very clever marketing, but any stick that sits in the camera's dead zone will be invisible. Not to say that you shouldn't just use Insta360's accessories that they've designed specifically for use with their cameras. Their accessories are actually priced at reasonable rates, and they're well worth it. And I gotta say, I really love this mounting case and how easy it is to pop the camera in and out of this case. Insta360 seems to really put some thought into their designs for ease of use, and in my experience, all Insta360 products are rugged and really well built. I thought I would be smart and just use a painter's pole as the extended selfie stick for fake drone shots and the like. It did do the job and the camera hid the pole just as well as it hides the invisible selfie stick. However, the painter's pole was not designed to be quiet and ended up being cumbersome and unwieldy, which is terrible for travel. Also, I put a wrist strap on my painter's pole because I was terrified of dropping the camera in the lake. But when I did that, I just couldn't reach the camera to hit the record button with one hand while the other hand was in the wrist strap. What a pain it was, and I should have just gotten the Insta360 extended pole. So, 360 video. Is this a novelty that will wear off in a couple of weeks, or is there long-term practical use for this? Initially, I was more interested in the 4K module of the camera because I wanted a good, small, modern, convenient, and stable webcam, and the 4K module provides just that. I simply considered the 360 lens as something I would never really use, but that's definitely changed. As for my main job, I work in promotions slash creative services for a small market TV station. Right off of the top of my head, I've got a lot of ideas already for various advertising applications of this camera. It would be great for producing car ads, of course, but also motorcycles, lawnmowers, golf carts, and things like that. With the rapid action and quick reframing that you can apply, it's great for making transitions between scenes and recycling the same footage to get more different usable shots out of it later is awesome. I'm going to give the Insta360 RS1 Twin Edition my highest recommendation for hobbyist video enthusiasts. It will do almost everything you will want it to do, especially with outside shots and its modular design should lend itself to upgrade paths in the future as Insta360 hopefully develops more mods for the camera in the years to come. If you work for a small operation or for yourself professionally, I recommend probably going with the Insta360 RS 1 inch edition, which will definitely give you better low light and nighttime shots. But I think that having either of these cameras in your arsenal as a video producer or content creator is just going to be an absolute must for most people. Anyway, that's all I have to say about this one. Thanks for watching. That's it for now, and I'll see you next time. It's
sound right, boy.